today on this rainy downtown day. Lots of news and politics, though, and I'd like to welcome my next guest, Hillary Levy Friedman. Thank you so much for Good coming to in. See you. Professor of Sociology at Brown University, expert in pageants. Big news today Miss America doing away with the swimsuit competition. Was this not unexpected? So it's not surprising because there's new leadership in the Miss America organization. So Gretchen Carlson, who many people will know um, from her time on Fox News and then pursuing Fox Chairman Roger Ailes, she was actually Miss America in 1989. So she was brought in in January to sort of remake the pageant after this email scandal. And she hinted even then that there were going to be some pretty big changes to come. So it's not surprising that they dropped swimsuit to me. It is surprising that they dropped any fitness component at all. Uh, very interesting. And, you know, you're an expert on pageants and pageantry and where it's been in the past to where it is now. Um, you know, talk with us a little bit where pageants are in 2018. You, I'm sure, saw some social media chatter today of, okay, well, what's it now? A spelling bee? Like, <laughs> <laughs> was this a natural progression? And, and where are pageants right now? So it's interesting because, of course, Miss America is not the only pageant in the U.S., it is sort of the most prominent, but there's also Miss USA. And many more people in Rhode Island know Miss USA because, of course, Olivia Culpo was Miss Rhode Island, then Miss USA, and then went on to win Miss Universe. And in fact, if you were to go to Miss Rhode Island USA and Miss Rhode Island America, you would see that Miss Rhode Island USA has many, many, many more contestants. And so Miss USA has a huge focus on swimsuit and evening gown, and it's pretty much, you know, a true beauty pageant. It's how, what, what do you look like? There's no talent component. The interview component is much less. So, mm. you know, to say that this is the death knell for beauty pageants doesn't seem to be true to me at all. And as, a, as with Gretchen Carlson at the helm and, and again, Miss America making this decision today, does it further differentiate the two pageants? Uh, definitely it does because Miss America is trying to say we are not about outer beauty anymore. We're only about inner beauty. Um, saying that they are no longer a pageant, they're now going to be a competition. Um, so then the question becomes really, what is Miss America about, right? I mean, what do you expect if they're talking about inner beauty, let's be honest, any pageant, any competition very much does focus on an outward appearance standpoint. I mean, do you think we'll see a more diverse array of, of women entering and succeeding if they're not the quote unquote conventional beauty pageant type? Yeah, I do expect there to be some different body types that will compete in the Miss America system now. Um, of course, you can be fit and not be the thinnest person, and many thin people are actually not that fit. Um, but there's actually no longer any fitness co component at all in Miss America. So I do think we'll see a change, but I'm not sure it's going to be a net positive in terms of the number of contestants. Some are already talking about, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm dropping out. Um, and then I think some new people will be attracted. So it's going to take at least a year or two to see how this really shakes out. And you know the world, you're in the world, you're a scholar in the pageant world, and you've got all these connections. I mean, what did you hear from folks sort of on the inside today when this news was announced? Um, well, I can't give away all my inside sources. Just sources, but <laughs> unnamed sources, it's fine here. Um, again, it was not a surprise that swimsuit was dropped. Mm. Um, when the announcement went out last week that Gretchen Carlson was going to be on Good Morning America, the teaser clip um, was only 15 seconds long, but I counted because I looked, <laughs> and they showed five different images of women competing, and three of them were in their swimsuits. Now, you could also argue that's a little strange that we're dropping swimsuit, but we're going to show everyone in their swimsuit. <laughs> Let's um, do a recollection yeah. of all the best swimsuits in the past. <laughs> yeah, so that was, you know, I think that shows a lot of the contradictions that are actually still going on with Miss America. So what is the future for pageantry? We're talking about the snapshot of where it is now, the difference with Miss USA and Miss America. Do you expect further changes, or do you see it staying still pretty true to its form? So I think we're going to see some smaller changes in the Miss America program over the next few months and over the next year. I'm not sure that it, those changes will make a splash in the news the way dropping swimsuit has. It's more going to matter to sort of serious fans and participants. Um, I don't see the Miss America pageant going away completely, but I do question whether it will always be on TV. So. Network TV, definitely questionable, even cable TV, but probably there'll be streaming options and that sort of thing. But again, um, it will be on ABC this fall. It's the last year of a contract, and so um, that will be up for renegotiation. So talk with us when you're uh, you know, in the academia and you're up at Brown and you're talking about your, uh, your research in, in pageantry. What do students want to know? Oh, wow, that's a really good question. So. Um, <laughs> 
Some things that have stood out to my students when I've taught this class is the extreme sort of chaperoning that goes on. Um, contestants, when they compete at Miss America, have to give up control of their cell phones for a period of time. They have to share their social media passwords. So that is very shocking um, to a lot of students. Um, the sort of term, the word girls, as is often used for contestants, mm -hmm. they find quite offensive. But at the same time, many students of mine who've never seen a beauty pageant before in any form, you know, it's like, it's hard not to get into it when you watch it, right? It's like a competition and you suddenly get a favorite and you're rooting for somebody. Um, so that surprises many of the students as well. But I think that's just innate in a competition. And, you know, for better or for worse, Pageants can be fun, and there are lots of people who are like, I like the glitz and glamour, I like the glitter, I like the sequins, so um, that's fine, right? And you might feel that way if you watch a show like RuPaul's Drag Race, which <laughs> really is pageantry to its most extreme form. How much do you think that Miss Congeniality really helped the world of pageantry? <laughs> the movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you definitely get the line, um, it's not a pageant, it's a scholarship competition <laughs> from there. It's a scholarship program. Um, you also get the April 25th, I think it's April 25th. The What's the perfect, perfect date? date. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, in many ways, Miss Congeniality does capture beauty pageants in a program like Miss America. It's like, it's campy, but it also has a nice message, right? You seem silly or making fun of it, but it's heartwarming at the end. Contestants are not just... Um, you know, two-dimensional, they're real people, and they have issues that they care about. So, you know, in many ways, it's an accurate representation, although the makeover of Sandra Bullock, I don't think, <laughs> if only that happened in real life. If you could actually actually buy that. And it's interesting you raise the social media, social media standpoint, because we've seen it impact um, contestants and winners in the world, that they take it away during the competition, what, just to mitigate, sort of put damage control so that they're not taking pictures during it. But there's going to be strict rules in place, obviously, afterwards, because no one's holding their phone after someone wins the crown. Well, they actually shut down the winner's personal social media accounts within an hour after winning. So those go away for about nine months. The current Miss America, I think just in the past few weeks, got access back to her Facebook and Instagram and her own someone Twitter. Someone else is handling it, like a politician. Right. It gets shut down, um, and everything goes out from the main account. Um, you know, but in the past contestants were not allowed to see any mail at all during the competition week. And that in, you know, included brothers and fathers and that sort of thing. Um, so after the preliminary competition, there's something, and it still happens, it's called visitation. <laughs> and um, you know, they're not as strict on the separating the genders anymore. But you know, I see that as an outgrowth of that old um, mentality that every, they need to be chaperoned at all times to have like, their virtue protected. <laughs> Interesting, again, as we're here in 2018, again, the big news today. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to, you know, you'll have some uh, more research and writing. This will be a, a, a pivotal moment when you kind of look back as to the changes in the pageant world. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, this is a pivotal moment. Um, again, this saying we want competition and we want to keep the talent and we will keep evening gown in some form, but we're doing away with swimsuit is um, a major, major change. Miss America is almost 100 years old. It started as a bathing beauty contest. So um, to get rid of the swimsuit contest is really kind of denying the DNA of the program itself. So this is a big deal. Um, I have a book that I'm working on that should be out um, it, you know, around what will be the 100th anniversary of Miss America in fall 2020. So I'm certainly getting lots of good you know, things to work with still over the, the next few months as I'm writing. Excellent. Well, I'm glad that you can incorporate this moving forward. And of course, we'd love to have you back here in studio when you have the book out, when the competition itself is taking place. But again, with the big news today, wanted to get the expert here in Rhode Island, Hillary Levy Friedman. I appreciate your taking the Thank time you. to come in. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.